In my previous video, we understood why the usual triplanar mapping technique we are taught on the internet is broken and then fixed it. We also developed two brand new projections that hugely improved the outcome on terrains. In this video, we're gonna go back to our working base triplanar and follow this other route to better fit it for use on assets, props and characters. Plus, a bonus trick that will allow us to have a smooth transition even with the single fetch mode. And by the way, if you are among the ones that downloaded the shader from the previous video, you may want to go back and re-download it, as I've updated it with the bonus trick I've just mentioned. So, let's go back to our base triplanar shader. What we want to achieve this time is that, when we position our mesh in the world, the projected textures stick to its surface, instead of sliding. To make it happen, we must change the starting data we're using to generate UVs and weights with something similar that sticks to the mesh. Easy enough, actually. If we transform this data from world space to local space, we get that straight away. You can think of this like tricking the shader into thinking that the mesh is always positioned at the origin of the world with no rotation and scale applied to it. Moreover, we can avoid executing these transformations and get this local space data directly by using these pre-skin variations of the same nodes. As this is data that is only available in the vertex shader, we must pass it through a vertex interpolator node to be able to use it, as all our nodes are operating in the pixel shader. Now, to make the normals work properly again, we must re-transform the vectors in the opposite direction, from local space to world space, as that's the input our shader expects. We have one last problem with the normals. Even though this time is not even our shader fault, it's just how it works in the engine by default. Are you able to tell me what's the difference between these two spheres? Hmm, let's open the normal buffer. Do you see any now? Yeah, I see none too. Maybe in the final image there was something, but it was nothing clear, right? Well, one of these spheres is almost completely flattened out. Its normals should look closer to the ones of a plane rather than the ones of a sphere. Well, this happens because the normal vectors are stored inside the mesh's vertices and are never scaled or translated, only rotated. The cool thing is that we are in the position to fix this thing too. To do that, we need to know by how much the mesh has been scaled along each axis, which is not an information we can access, not directly at least. We can calculate it with a little workaround. Let's take the three world axis vectors and let's transform them from local space to world space. If our mesh has been scaled, these resulting vectors won't have a length of 1 anymore, but they will be long exactly as the scale amount applied to the mesh along that direction. So we can now calculate their length to retrieve the mesh scale values and combine them into a new vector. Now we can divide our vertex normal by the scale to make the projection weights correctly update. And divide the final normals by it once again to make the projected normals textures correctly display to. This time there is no difference between the three and the single sample versions in what we have to do. Moreover, having the mesh scale available gives us another interesting opportunity. If we multiply our position data by it, we get a projection that translates and rotates with the mesh but keeps the texture's proportions. You might want or not this extra feature depending on your use case, but now you know the possibility exists. I've added the option to freely switch between them in the material function containing this static mesh triplanar you can download by following the link in the description. Good, we have achieved our first target. Now, something only for the Braves. There's still one more asset type on which our mapping may not work correctly, and that is the Skeletal Mesh. Skeletals not only can be rotated and scaled into the world, but they're also furtherly deformed by the animation they play. Problem is that there's no such thing as animation space or anything along those lines, so we are on our own to find a solution. Let's start from the simple things. Let's remove everything relative to the mesh scaling, as you're not planning to scale skeletal meshes in a non-uniform way, right? Right? 
All we need to care about is the rotation of the normal vectors. Which ones could be, in this case, the vectors we could use to build our transformation base? Good question. If you figure it out, let me know, as I wasn't able to. That's why I had to fall back to an approach that I consider more of a brute force one. Do you remember when, in my previous video, I've explained how the mesh tangent space is calculated? That's exactly what we are going to replicate this time, directly in the shader, by using the projection UVs as starting base. Luckily for us, the thing is nice and easy, as it just requires us to use this material function Epic provides us in replacement of our transformations. And since its output is directly in word space, we can also remove this final transformation. There you go, fix it. But now we have a problem in the single sample version. We can't just pass to the function our pre-blended UVs to still execute one single transformation, as it will make those annoying broken pixels we spoke about in my previous video reappear along the seams. So, what do we do? Let's open the material function and let's see if we can do something about it. Alright, we are still executing a transformation similar to what we were doing before, but with a base calculated in a different way. The Z of the base is still the vertex normal, as it was for us. Here we got some stuff to calculate the other two vectors. Oh, there you go. We are calculating the derivatives of our UVs. So, if we make a little mod that makes the function accept the derivatives directly, we can use our pre-blended ones and we're good to go. Let's copy all these nodes into our shader and let's make this little change. And you can see that now everything works perfectly. Even though there is a little thing that's disturbing me. The way the tangent vectors are being normalized. I don't know if I'm missing something, but to me this looks like a way to avoid one square root by sacrificing the orthonormality of the base vectors. Because if you were sure that the two vectors would come out having the same length, and I don't see how they could, you would also spare this max operation and just divide directly by the length of one of them. Moreover, if I individually normalize them, the result is clearly different. So I really think this might be the case. If any of you watching has more insights about this, please share them in the comments or my Discord server, I'd be interested in reading that. Anyways, I leave you the choice of changing the normalization or not. I've personally changed it inside the material function you can download from the link in the description. Anyways, now the mannequin can freely breakdance without compromising its lighting. I'm sure that our lighter friend Eros will appreciate it. And now that we got all our main achievements, let's go for the bonus one. Which consists in a little trick to fake a smooth transition between projections even with the single sample tree planner. This trick is actually as old as digital images themselves and goes by the name of dithering. It's a way to give the illusion of continuous values at a macro scale with a certain disposition of binary values at a micro scale. There are many ways of dithering an image, but today we'll simply rely on another material function that Epic provides us. All we need is to use it to step all our projection weights after their normalization. And that's it. If we look into one of the rendering buffers, we can see better what it's doing. It alternates the weights between adhesion pixels and thanks to the temporal jittering of the anti-aliasing, this pattern get kinda blurred into a gradient into the final image. You can thank some of the members of my Discord server for this, who first implemented it and gave me the idea. As last note on this, if you're making a shader that can switch between single sample and standard tree planner, you'll need to add some static switches here. As at the moment, we are dithering the weights also for the tree samples case, which doesn't make sense. That's what I've done in the material functions you can download from the link below. Once again, I want to thank my patrons for their support with a discount code for these material functions. And I'll see you in my next video.